Hi, my name is Kelly Santarosa. I'm a policy analyst with AUMA, and welcome to our webinar on the Alberta First Responders Radio Communication System, or AFRIX. We're very pleased to have the following speakers with us today. Uh, Curtis Brochu, Director of Transformation with Service Alberta. Steve Bull, Assistant Deputy Minister of Service Alberta. Uh, Brenda Bond, Manager of Communication Systems. Shane Ramtimel, Client Services Officer for Alberta. And Mike Good, Officer in Charge of the Operation Strategy Branch for Alberta. And Brenda, Shane, and Mike are from the RCMP. So I'm going to turn it over to Curtis to begin. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'll get started with uh, the Alberta First Responders Radio Communications section of this webinar. Um, as most of you already know, AFRAX is a province-wide public safety grade radio system that's been in the works for a long time. It went operational in July of last year, and the objectives for AFRAX were from the very outset to improve the safety of all Albertans, improve the safety of first response officers, and make it available to all first response officers across the province. One of our main goals in building out AFRAX was really to enable interoperability and to create an environment where our first responder community, meaning police, fire, and EMS, could communicate across jurisdictions and across disciplines. So as AFRAX has been built out, um, the contractor Harris had a guarantee that they had to provide 95% mobile outdoor coverage on all primary and secondary roads and 95% portable coverage on the roads and 102 named communities, including the seven major cities. Overall, as a result of testing, as Harris concluded their build, we found that most, if not all, commercial AFRAX coverage was better than most, if not all, the commercial carriers today. We have 332 coverage sites across the province. 332 coverage sites across the province, and this is an example of one of them. So what you're looking at is Buffalo Creek. So as I mentioned, we provided coverage across the roads, but not all our sites are built on roads. The coverage extends far beyond just the road network in the province of Alberta. Um, the reason I've shown you Buffalo Creek here is because there's a couple of significant factors around it. If you look at the little slide to the right, the yellow pin is actually where Buffalo Creek is. The blue pin is Fort McMurray, and the green pin is the city of Edmonton. It's in the middle of nowhere, and then if you look at the actual site down in the bottom right, you'll see a wide array of solar panels. There is not even commercial power where this site is built at. So where are we today? So we have been operational since July of last year. There are 30, 30, 332 coverage sites across Alberta. There are four National Park Mountain sites that are still in progress. Those are the remaining sites that have yet to be built. They are literally on the tops of mountains in the Banff and Jasper National Parks. Today, we have more than 7,000 radios registered on AFRAX. That means that there are users on AFRAX today who have been live and operational on it for during the last year. Our first users started in January of 2016. And when we talk about using AFRAX, really I want to make sure that we're aware that this is a system that is designed to be used by first responders across the province. It's used in suburban, urban, and rural environments. It's not just a big city system. It works across the province. And it's in use by law enforcement, fire, and EMS today. It isn't just a law enforcement system. It's not a fire system. It's a public safety grade first responder system. When we built it out, we built it out with the view that municipalities would be able to take advantage of this build by the government of Alberta. And so for that, there are some real considerations for each of you as a municipal entity. The use of AFRAX is voluntary for your municipal services. Your municipal services here really being your law enforcement groups, your bylaw officers, your community peace officers, and your fire services. Those, for those areas, it's voluntary. You can choose to use it or you can choose to maintain and operate your existing radio system. It is a voluntary service available to the community to use. AFRAX is being used by Alberta Health Services for ambulance services across the province, and it will be used by the RCMP as they will discuss a little later in this presentation. One of the things that we've always said is that each municipality is responsible for their own radio equipment. 
and their own radio equipment means the portables and the mobile radios that you would give to your firefighters and your bylaw officers. And in so doing that, you have to license those radios with ICED. Uh, ICED, formerly Industry Canada, does levy a radio fee, and it's the same kind of fee that you've been paying on your existing radios that you've been paying for years. Other considerations that you need to think about, and the reason I bring up the ICED fee, is that for first responders, there is no fee for using APRAX. That is, for your community peace officers, your fire services, you would have a fee-free access agreement for using APRAX. One of the things that came through AUMA and other forums over the last several years was that municipalities clearly indicated to us that that didn't meet all of your needs, that there was really a responsibility and a requirement to maintain an additional radio service for your first respond, your secondary responders, so public works, transit, the other services you provide. And so over the last several years, we've gone through a process where we've worked with I said, formerly Industry Canada, as well as the Government of Alberta and the AFRAX Governance Council, to make sure that we could, in fact, allow for that secondary responder users on AFRAX. And so that means, as a municipality, you can also use AFRAX for transit services, public works, roads. However, because we didn't set out in our scope and scale to provide that range of services, there could be a one-time fee and then there's an annual fee per radio of 275. So that is a fee that would go to the Alberta government for use of APRAX for the secondary responders. So fee free for your primary responders, fire services and law enforcement, and a fee of $275 per radio per year for your secondary responders, transit, public works, et cetera. And that is really based around uh, trying to determine what the cost recovery model for the use of those radios would be. So over time, that fee will move to what is the true cost recovery. Having been operational only for just coming up to one year, we don't have the budgetary information to accurately identify what the true cost recovery is. This is our projection so far today. So, why would you want to use AFRAX? Um, we talk about it being a public safety grade radio system, increasing resiliency and availability for when the time or community looks like this. This is Irvine, Alberta. These pictures that you see now are from Alberta. So we've built out a radio system that is designed to be able to be sustained through these kind of events. So when your community is underwater or as some have happened when your community is on fire, which has happened more than once in the province of Alberta, AFRAX is a radio system is available for your first responders to be able to use to coordinate and effectively deal with these issues. So when you're thinking about a radio system, having it available when you need it is one thing. So AFRAX, as we said, is voluntary fee-free basis. You don't have to pay to use AFRAX. The government will actually continue to build out and pay and operate, maintain and sustain AFRAX. And if you're looking at what your overall costing, if you want to do your own radio system in your community, the system costs itself are somewhere between 40 to 60% of your overall costs. And that really is reflective on how big a system you need to put in. And by big, I mean in square kilometers, geography of coverage. The larger area you have to cover, the more money you have to put into the system. The remainders of the costs are your handheld radios, your mobile radios, the ones you put in the vehicles. So those costs are going to remain yours as, as they were today. So essentially, if you use AFRAX, you're choosing to avoid the costs of operating your own system, replacing it when it gets at the end of its life cycle and moving forward that way. So you're saving, it's a cost avoidance model where you can avoid those costs in the future. You will own your own radio equipment and all the costs that go with that equipment and its connectivity. And connectivity is really based around dispatch centers. Many communities run their own dispatch center and those dispatch centers need to be connected through a telecommunication company connection through to AFRAX. 
Um, if you're contracting out your dispatch services, as many municipalities do, then those costs are built into your fee for dispatch services costs. And that's why I say dispatch centers have those unique costs. So really the dispatch centers have uh, a very separate approach to getting into AFRAX based on the connectivity requirements, but every municipality has to pay the costs on their own portables and mobile radios. Um, any specific improvements are municipalities cost to implement. And so really what we're talking about here, the best example would be light rail transit tunnels in some of the major cities where they want to extend coverage underground and into areas that are not really public access. Those kinds of extensions and specific improvements are really the municipalities to operate. We would work with you to make sure you knew what you were putting in and that your implementation would be successful, but the costs and the implementation of those things would be yours. So we've talked about radios and radios have been a hot topic for many years on AFRAX. Uh, when we started this build, everyone talked about it's all going to be a $7,000 radio. Um, they're not all a $7,000 radio. Um, they start at $1,200 and they go up from there depending upon the features and functions you require in a radio. And so if you require specific features and functions, then those things drive the cost of radio. And so it really depends upon getting a radio that fits your requirements. And everybody's requirements are different. The larger an organization generally tends to be the larger those requirements. The government of Alberta um, set out to make available purchasing power of the government of Alberta to all municipalities. And so doing, we ran a request for qualifications with the radio vendors who build P25 radios that could work on AFRAX. Once we qualified the radios, we then entered into standing offer agreements with six vendors, manufacturers of radios, who have then built out their price listing to starting at $1,200 and up from there, depending on the model and the radio and the features you're looking for. What that is, is that allows municipalities to go and buy radios off of a government contract. Um, so when you are comparing radios, and so this often happens that people will talk about radios, but they won't align them up with features and functions. So it's really important when you're doing some pricing comparisons to compare apples to apples. Um, don't just take all of the vendors at their word for it. There is um, many variations and tricks in what they do for pricing the radios. Uh, at the end, there'll be some contact information and we can put you in touch with the government sending offer so that you are able to actually look at what the prices are for the radios that might meet your requirements. So in summary, really here on the AFRAX part, the build of AFRAX is done. We are into an operational state. We have been since January of last year. Other than four mountaintop sites which have to be built, uh, in the Banff and Jasper National Parks, as you can imagine, those sites are taking longer just by the nature of the environment that we're putting them in. Uh, there are many users on AFRAX today. So those include large and small urban, suburban and rural users. We have some very small six member enforcement teams. We have larger fire departments that are preparing to migrate on. Each of the major cities is in some state of migration and the use of AFRAXs isn't being limited by the location in Alberta or the size of the municipality. It's really available depending upon your requirements for a radio system. So as we get towards the end of the summary here, one of the things I really wanted to mention was that AFRAX has been around and been helpful in the events that we've been seeing in Alberta over the last several years. AFRAX was there and made a difference in the coordinating the firefighting efforts during the Fort McMurray wildfire. We were there on day one and providing radios to all incoming fire crews, enabling coordination between firefighters, incident command, water trucks, bulldozers, anybody who was out there actively fighting the fire was able to communicate across disciplines to everyone else that they needed to communicate with because AFRAX was working. And the interesting thing about that was that 
we didn't need to deploy any of our portable sites because our disaster resilient sites continued to operate throughout the wildfire. Although commercial power disrupted, the battery and the generators that we build at the sites wherever we can sustain the radio system throughout that entire event without having to rely on replacement tower sites. Going back a little further, we were also there during the floods in southern Alberta. Uh, and in that case, we were actually using portable tower sites and handing out radios in that case. Today, we are starting to see some of the resolution and problems that have been developing for years between interagencies. Alberta Health Services and local fire departments today are sharing talk groups and sharing information back and forth on the radio with fire services and HS ambulance services that haven't been able to for a while because of those services migrating to AFRACs. And really what the message needs to be is that AFRACs is available for your first responders. Police, fire, law enforcement, rescue services, ambulance services are currently using the system today and it is available for use in your municipality today. So from an AFRAX perspective on this webinar, if you'd like additional information or wish to initiate a process to explore what using AFRAX would be like, um, there's some contact information that you can reach out and we'll be happy to provide you with information and answer any further questions on a one-on-one -on -one nature that you may be looking for. The questions that have been coming up, uh, we will answer at the end of the session as we go forward here. But for now, I'd really like to be able to turn it over to my colleagues from the RCMP. Good afternoon. My name is Brenda Bond, and I'm currently responsible for the K-Division Radio Replacement Project uh, for the RCMP. So I'm just going to give you a rough overview of kind of the background and how we got to where we are today, uh, just to, to let you know where we started. So currently the RCMP runs a radio system called what we call the Province of Alberta Communication Systems, otherwise known as PACS. Many of you would know it would know it as PAX. Um, this system was supplied and installed back in 1987. Uh, Motorola was the, the supplier of this system and they currently no longer support any of its components due to its age. Uh, PAX is well beyond its end of life uh, and its original re replacement was scheduled for back in 2002. Um, we're currently working on keeping this system up and running and uh, many of the repairs that we're doing uh, are down to the circuit board level by some of our radio technicians who are well versed in this area. Uh, over a number of years there was many talks between the RCMP and the government of Alberta about uh, replacing the PAX radio system. Uh, eventually a decision was made after the GOA decided that they were going to uh, build their own system, otherwise known as AFRAX. Um, the RCMP made the decision to come on to that system. Uh, so all RCMP business lines within Alberta, including all of our provincial, municipal and federal units will be moving to AFRAX. Um, many of our partners are already in the process of moving to AFRAX, including Edmonton Police Service. Current status of our project. So in order for us to get on to AFRAX, we actually had to get uh, Treasury Board funding approval, uh, which was approved for us back in June of 2015. Uh, oh, it took us about a year or so to work out an MOU with AFRAX, but we, it came to a conclusion in July of 2016. At that time, our agreement was signed. Uh, we're currently uh, underway doing a number of tests throughout the province. So we're doing detachment coverage testing and also testing some other areas of concern uh, to ensure we have adequate coverage. Um, a number of other things are underway, including uh, detachment base station installs, uh, vehicle installation of new mobile radios is well underway. Uh, and we're currently working uh, pretty heavily actually on our fleet map and code plug development um, to determine how best to utilize uh, AFAX throughout the province. So this might be kind of small for everybody to see, but um, I think we'll be providing you th with these slides after. 
Um, so this is our projected timeline. So this is a projection uh, and some of the activities that are currently underway within the RCMP. So as I said previously, we're currently working on doing some detachment coverage surveys uh, and installations, um, working on some of the OCC. So our, our communication center um, testing is currently underway as well as um, establishing some of our connectivity back to the AFRAX core. Um, Along through the timeline, you'll see a number of events taking place, including some uh, testing and evaluation, uh, training development, and then you'll see there our, transi our transition timeline is set to start in May of 2018. So, so far that's uh, what we're planning on our go live date to be, um, keeping in mind that that doesn't mean that we're going to flip the whole province over uh, in May. It's going to take us some time to transition the whole province over uh, to the new radio system. One thing I want to mention though, uh, many of you are operating on PACs currently for your CPOs and, and other folks. Uh, the PAC system is going to be maintained up until a point after we fully transition to AFRAX. So we will continue to maintain that system until we fully move over and we're not going to remove services until uh, we're comfortable that we're, we're working properly on the new AFRAX system. So uh, expected outcomes for us uh, with the move to AFRAX is we're expecting to have more secure, reliable radio communications. Um, we're looking forward to being able to communicate with other first responders um, using interoperability talk groups as well as the common event talk groups that have been established. Um, we're definitely looking forward to improved radio coverage as well as uh, the ability to communicate over a wide area. And that's all I had set for my um, little spiel here, I guess. Okay, so I'll uh, we'll start answering um, some questions. So again, if you if you have any questions, just go ahead and type them into the chat box. And we'll start with Stefan Price. And I'm just going to read the questions, not because I don't think you can't read, but because the recording doesn't record the chat box. So for people to listen, it's easier if they know what the question is that we're answering them. Uh, so the first question is, what is the average radio cost? And who would like to answer that? Oh, Curtis, Curtis will answer that for us. Hi, thanks for the question, Stephen. Um, I can't really give you an average radio cost, uh, primarily because everybody's requirements are different and they drive different functions in the radio. Um, base cost is $1,200, so generally I think that doesn't fit very many people's needs. They're usually looking for a few more features than that. I think uh, if you're willing to spend $2,000, $2,500, you can probably get a fairly functional radio in that range. And if you're looking for additional features like encryption and over-the-air rekeying for encryption, the ability to program it over the air, then your costs go up considerably. So it's really not so much what an average radio cost is. It's really about what are your requirements and then making sure that you price a radio according to your requirements. Okay, thanks for that response. Um, so then uh, Stefan had another question about who to contact in the Calgary area to set up a field test before making a decision. So I noticed Jamie Campbell had a few names, um, but Curtis has a few comments in response to that as well. Um, thanks again. And one of the things that we've done with AFRAX is that we have provided the radio manufacturers with the ability to put radios on AFRAX. The manufacturers, and by manufacturers I mean Harris, Motorola, Kenwood, Realm, Tate, EF Johnson, have then passed that ability down to their distributors. So what that means is you can go to your local radio distributor, the person you generally buy radios from, ask him for uh, AFRAX capable radios and they will lend you a couple of loaner radios that you can then go and using that manufacturer's talk groups do can you hear me now testing in your area determine whether it meets your requirements how well it covers your jurisdiction and you can do all of that just by working with your local radio vendor the same person that you've probably worked with for years just to do that field test before you actually decide is this going to meet our our requirements and really that's what we recommend is go out and do a lot of can you hear me now testing and you should be able to get that from whoever you normally deal with in your radio environment today 
All right, thanks very much, Curtis. Um, so Pam just asked if the copy of a presentation will be available. Uh, so just there will be um, a video recording. We'll upload it to our YouTube channel and send out the link with our newsletter. If you're interested in a PDF copy of the presentation, you can email me. My email address is in the chat box and I'll send you a PDF copy of this. Okay, so the next question. Uh, presently, AHS units cannot talk to fire services that do not have AFRACs or, oh, did I miss one? Oh, sorry, I missed one. <laughs> uh, field staff and AHS are indicating large coverage gaps in topography and a system that seems incomplete. Uh, so I think Steve is going to, or Curtis is going to, oh, they're fighting over the headset, guys. You're, you're all missing it. Okay, Steve is going to respond. Thank you very much, and thank you for the question. Um, so absolutely, we are aware that uh, Alberta Health Services staff in the Banff region have been indicating uh, coverage gaps there. Uh, that's for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, for any terrestrial radio system, uh, we will never have 100% uh, coverage. And so for any first responder agency, they will have some form of backup system that, that will be used. Uh, from a Banff region perspective, uh, that is also one of the areas of the province where we are still to complete the construction of a mountaintop site, uh, which will help significantly in, in that region. Um, but most importantly, right now, uh, we're currently working with uh, Alberta Health Services uh, with regards to the equipment that they're using, uh, both from an AFRAX perspective, as well as their satellite system, which is their, their backup system, uh, which is designed to be used where AFRAX does have coverage gaps in, in mountains. And uh, we're trying to make sure that uh, that, that uh, equipment is set up correctly and, uh, and basically works. Uh, so we're working very collaboratively with the Banff uh, Fire Department, uh, as well as uh, AHS and their contracted uh, ambulance service uh, for that region. All right, thanks very much, Steve. Uh, so next question, um, presently AHS units cannot talk to fire services that do not have AFRACs or may not be moving to the system soon. Uh, I think Curtis is going to take that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, back to me again. Um, correct. Uh, we're not able to provide connections between other radio systems other than AFRAX. We are able to work with the AFRAX users, of which AHS is obviously one, and the fire services that migrate over to be able to share talk groups as well as create common event talk groups across the province that agencies that are using AFRAX are able to communicate with other agencies that use AFRAX. Um, and so really that's really what we're doing is that we are serving the AFRAX users and enhancing their ability to communicate. Um, we're not actually able to or capable of then connecting across legacy systems across the province. It's really about how do we service the AFRAX users to improve their capabilities and their communication during their emergencies. Okay. Um, Thanks, Curtis. Hopefully that answered your question, Stefan. Uh, the next question is from Mark Murphy. So please confirm the ability of community peace officers, so CPOs, to talk to RCMP when the RCMP goes to AFRAX. I understand the RCMP will not allow CPOs to access their AFRAX channels. Thanks. Uh, so who would like to... Okay, Brenda is going to answer that question. Hello, thank you for your question. Um, so you are correct. The RCMP, when we move to AFRAX, all of our talk groups will be encrypted. Um, so the CPOs will not be able to access those talk groups. Um, we do plan on putting in, so uh, AFRAX is, has built a number of uh, regional talk groups for the CPOs. So we do plan on putting all of those talk groups in our radios. So we will still be able to talk to the CPOs. Uh, it just may not be as seamless as today. Um, with us being on the same frequency all the time. So um, it means that our standard operating procedures will likely have to change in that you may have to get some dispatch folks together to, to uh, let the RCMP know that you would like to talk to them. We are going to do some testing to see if we can put those talk groups in our radios to see if we can scan for them. I'm, I can't really commit to that working at this point because we haven't done any full testing of that to make sure that that's going to work for us. So we'll still be able to talk to you, um, just not in the same manner that we have previously. 
All right, thanks very much, Brenda. Um, and so then the next question I think is kind of along the same lines. Uh, will the RCMP be able to talk to fire or is the system encrypted unless a fire unit initiates a common frequency at every event? Uh, so back to back to that, the RCMP, yes, all of our talk groups will be encrypted. So anytime there is an event, we will have to, whoever is taking incident command for, for whatever is going on, will have to initiate uh, all of us going on to either a common event talk group or uh, possibly an interoperability talk group. But uh, in this case, if it was a fire, I anticipate that uh, whoever is taking incident command would likely have everybody move to a, a common event talk group. Okay. And Brenda, the next question is for you specifically. <laughs> Any best guess how long they will keep PAC going after AFRAX goes live? Um, so the answer to this is kind of a tricky one because it kind of depends on the area specifically as we have a number of, uh, so the PAC system for every repeater site that we have, we have leases uh, for, for every site. Uh, so it'll kind of depend on the areas that we do first, how long we keep it up and running. But I do anticipate that uh, PACs will remain at least until the end of 2019. Um, so the earliest that we would be starting to take it down would be sometime late 2019. Kate Green, hopefully that answers your question. Um, we have another question here. When a fire service contacts their primary dispatch on VHF and requests a patch to AFRAX-based units, will that be possible? Uh, Kate Curtis is going to answer that. Hello again. Um, so the answer really depends upon your dispatch center. So technically it's possible, very much possible, um, very realistic scenario. Uh, when I say it depends upon your dispatch center is that your dispatch center would need to have AFRAX capable radios, consoles within their department to be able to set up those patches. So the question really depends upon the capability of your dispatch center. The system certainly allows for it. If your dispatch center is also dispatching others on AFRAX and has AFRAX radios and consoles in their system, then yes, they can. And if they don't, then they wouldn't be able to build that patch for you because they'd be missing that piece of equipment. Great. Thanks, Curtis. Um, so if you have any other questions, we'll just leave it open for a couple of minutes and see if anyone types anything in. Uh, yeah. Actually, Curtis has some additional comments, so go ahead, Curtis. I just wanted to um, add to Brenda's comments earlier about AFRAC setting up regional talk groups for community peace officers. So the information that's being portrayed here today has been out there for a while, as indicated in the chat comments. And one of the things that is being done is a regionalization approach for community peace officers who would then share talk groups amongst themselves across the region and be able to have access to other peace officers to be able to support them in what they're doing as well. So there are new alternatives developing as the situation evolves that will allow the RCMP to communicate on those talk groups as well as community peace officers with and among each other. So there are solutions that are being developed and if you're looking at implementing some of those solutions, by all means, uh, give us a call or contact us afterwards so we can tell you where that's at. Yeah, thanks, Curtis. Um, actually, maybe I'll just move the slides back to their contact information so you guys can copy that down if you want to. Uh, we also have another question from Derek Werner about future plans for AFRAX training. Uh, I'll give it back to Curtis again. Curtis is in the hot seat. It's not that hot. <laughs> Um, AFRAX training, yes, for about the last year and a half, AFRAX has been uh, running what we call technical administrative training. And as we were a project, that was something that we created and identified a need for. And so that technical administrative training allows an individual to provision radios on AFRAX. Um, over the past year and a half, we've trained uh, well over 100 people in that skill and ability. And as we've moved from being a project into an operational state, we're not at the point where we can continue to provide that training today. 
Will we expect that training to come back in the future? Yes. We just need to be able to transition from the project where we had project resources that were able and had the time to do it to being able to build that into our capabilities and our operational environment going forward. We are in that transition phase and during this transition it's not something that we're able to provide at this time. Uh, the headline for when we would provide it, I don't actually have a date for you, although we would communicate it out either in a newsletter or some other communication coming from AFRAX as we move into that more operational state. All right, great. Thanks very much. Um, so I think that's any other questions. I'll give you guys about a minute or so to think of anything before we um, close this off. <laughs> okay, it looks like we have answered every possible question you guys have. Um, so uh, I'd just like to remind you of some, of some more upcoming events that we're having here at AUMA. Um, just find the slide here. There we go. So our Summer Mayor's Caucus is coming up in the beginning of June. We also have a public risk conference in June. And then, of course, convention is November 22nd to 24th this fall. Uh, I'd really like to thank Stephen, Curtis, Brenda, Shane, and Mike for taking the time to be here and to share their expertise about AFRAX and answer your questions. And I'd like to thank all of you for dialing in. Um, and if you want to keep track of the events that we have in the upcoming webinars, please visit auma.ca slash events. And we look forward to having a chance to speak with you again through the webinars. So have a great day. Bye. <laughs>